Hey, remote learners. I hope you are safe and hunkered in at home. I am Ellie Swartz, author of Finding Perfect and Smart Cookie and Give and Take. I thought I would read a couple chapters of my new book, Give and Take, to share with you. Hey, a shout out and thanks to Macmillan for permission to do this and be a part of your remote learning day. So we're kicking off with chapter one called Baby Girl. Baby Girl is the name written on her birth certificate, but I think that's a bit sad. Mom calls her Isabel. That feels way too formal for a silky, soft, chubby day old baby who smells like powder. So I name her Izzy. I know I'm not supposed to get attached to the baby or her name. Both are temporary. That's what Rita said. She's the woman with the rainbow striped sweater who owns Caring Adoptions. She said this little one is with us for a speck of time. Then she'll go to her forever family and get a forever name. But the truth is I got attached. I saw this little bundle of sweetness. I mean, only a zombie or my big brother Dylan wouldn't fall in love with this tiny human with long slender fingers that wrap around my thumb. But I'm not the only one attached. Last night, my little brother Charlie said, I love my new baby sister as he hopped onto my lap to read where the wild things are. You know, she's not your sister for keeps, I said, reminding him and me. Maybe if I'm really good, she'll stay and I'll get to be someone's big brother. I hugged Charlie. It doesn't work that way, Bear. Sadness stretched across his sad face. I repeated what Rita told us, that Izzy isn't our sister for keeps. She's our sister for a smidgen. Rita said it had to do with the birth parents needing that time to make a plan, a really good plan, to decide if adoption is right for them, and if it is to find a loving home with a loving family. So in two days or two weeks or a month, we'll need to return our little bundle to Rita and the agency, like a library book. But I don't want to tell Charlie that, because to me, she feels like my baby sister, even if it's for just a few days. Chapter two, the green jello declaration. I'm not really supposed to call her my sister. That was another thing Rita told me in our meeting after the Green Jello declaration. It was try this Tuesday family dinner. No one had guessed the experimental ingredient in our maybe meat lasagna. Not Gramps, Dad, Dylan, Charlie, or me. Green Jello with yellow and red fruit chunks was dessert. Mom was super proud of it. I've never really been a fan of desserts that jiggle and contain no chocolate. But mom told me it was a special one that Nana used to make when mom was a little girl, so I took a bite. Then mom stood up and said, Dad and I have an announcement. Dylan and I looked at each other. The last big announcement was that they bought new salt and pepper shakers in the shape of our dog, Batman. I'm not sure that really qualified as announcement worthy, but then mom said, we decided to take in a newborn baby awaiting adoption. Mom smiled like she was full of happiness. So I told my parents I thought it was a good idea. Dylan wanted to know if it meant that he couldn't try out for the travel basketball team and Charlie danced around the kitchen chanting, I'm gonna be a big brother. The next day, after my parents reassured Dylan that he could still try out and told Charlie that our fostering was short-term, we took a family field trip to Caring Adoptions. Mom said Rita had to be certain we were good temporaries. I wasn't sure what that meant until Izzy arrived with her tiny fingers and steel blue eyes and smell of powder. Now I know that taking care of little ones for a speck of time is an important job, maybe the most important. Caring Adoptions was bright and had bells on the door that chimed when we entered. Rita greeted us and said that she talked to Dylan first, me second, then Charlie with mom and dad. 
While Dylan met with her, Charlie sat on the green carpet playing with a floppy teddy bear. Mom and Dad held hands at the too small table. Mom looked happier than I'd seen her in a long time. Her face was soft and warm and less sad. After Nana died a year ago from some infection that crept into her lung, Mom had a great big hole in her heart. I know, because I had one too. Mom said I shouldn't worry that she just needed time to heal. But then last month, Mom put on her Women in Charge t-shirt and went to a conference for women run small businesses. Mom joined the group when she started the Application Advisor to help kids applying to college. At the morning workshop on network strategies, she met Rita and learned that a newborn was coming who needed a home a loving home for a short time. After mom's big announcement, I realized that maybe mom didn't really need time. Maybe she just needed a new little human to love. I sank into the big fluffy blue couch in the waiting room and wondered if it was that way on purpose to make visitors like me feel safe and tucked in. Then I looked around and realized I was surrounded by hundreds of cards with pictures of smiling babies and happy parents and words like wonder, peace, miracle, and joy. When Dylan came out of Rita's office, it was my turn to go in. Rita was wearing a sweater with all the colors of the rainbow. I like the orange stripe best. It reminded me of pumpkin pie, my favorite colored pencil. The sign above Rita's desk said, a new baby is the beginning of all things. Wonder, hope, a dream of possibilities. Etta Lachane. Hi, Maggie. Thanks for coming. Rita offered me a piece of butterscotch candy from the bowl on her desk. The candy reminded me of Nana. Butterscotch was her favorite. I wondered if that was something she remembers in heaven. We talked for a while about seventh grade apple picking at Billow's Orchard and how chocolate cake with chocolate icing and chocolate chips might be the best dessert ever. Then she said, how do you feel about being a foster sister? Sounds good. I mean, I like being a sister, so I think I'll like this too. Plus, babies are super cute. And mom and dad said these babies really need us. That's true, she said. These babies need lots of love. This is an important job, Maggie. A special kind of fostering. It's for a few days, a week, a handful of weeks at most, until the babies can go to their forever homes. I twirled the candy around my mouth with my tongue. Can I ask you something? Sure, anything. Rita popped one of the butterscotch candies into her mouth. If these little ones are getting adopted, why do they need us? I mean, why don't they just go right to their forever families? In Massachusetts, birth parents can't sign papers allowing for an adoption until four days after birth. Why? Gives birth parents time to select their baby's forever family and to make sure adoption is the best decision for them and their baby. That's where I come in. I help them find a loving short-term foster family that can take care of their baby while they're figuring these things out. Like us. Yes, like you, Rita said. But remember, Maggie, you're not the baby's forever sister. She smiled. Your family's job is to help this little one have a wonderful start in life and not to get too attached. Turns out I'm not so good at the last part. That's the end of chapter two. I hope you get to hang out and spend more time with Maggie while you are tucked in at home. Stay safe, my friends.